We're going to stay on Syria now because Best of the Whip today columnist James Taranto last week argued for a yes vote on Syria intervention, although he wasn't exactly enthusiastic about it. Uh, James, have you changed your mind in the intervening days since that column? Well, the way I would put it is I, I found it impossible to remain convinced of the argument I made. My instinct. You changed your mind. Well, my instinct after Obama Come on, made James. this. Let me elaborate. My instinct after Obama made this request of Congress was to say no. Was to say this is ridiculous. He's just looking for political cover. You know, it's they're both bad options. Why should Republicans uh, sign on to this? Then we discussed last week. I, with some intellectual exertion, I managed to persuade myself of the case for a yes vote. Well, then, what did we see last week? We saw further displays of fecklessness and weakness. I didn't set the red line. We saw John Kerry make it, put on, on a, an abominable performance, you know, blustering about Munich in one breath and then saying that this was going to, that the strike was going to be unbelievably small in the next. So it reinforced the sense that the, there's no possible good outcome if Congress had voted yes, except given, you know, tying Republicans to this, uh, this weak leadership. Well, your column uh, sparked a lot of reader comment, and I'd love you to respond to just a couple of them. We'll put the first one up here on the screen, and I quote, Taranto seems to be walking back his ill-advised support for military intervention in Syria. Good. Giving political cover to a mission that will accomplish little and may actually hurt a lot should not be the job of right-leaning editorialists. If your principles tell you we must, quote, do something, end quote, then advocate for something worth doing. Buck Hebner. Well, I wouldn't exactly say it, call it walking back my support for military intervention in Syria. As I wrote yesterday, I would be in favor of military intervention in Syria uh, if it had a military objective and a strategic purpose. This doesn't, and so I, what I was again, what I was, what I tried to convinced myself to be for and failed was the yes vote as the worst, the, the better of two awful alternatives. So you're on the hawkish side of the party with a Marco Rubio or Ron Johnson, these kinds of, of, of guys. Okay, let's go to the second reader comment now, and I quote, the supporters of Obama's Syrian boondoggle remind me of the supporters of an Obama presidency. In theory, they support a strong, credible U.S. leadership in the Middle East. But in reality, our leader is clearly ill-equipped and ill-suited for the job and is neither strong nor credible. Adelaide Burton. Well, I guess what I would say is uh, that, uh, yes, when you, this goes back to what I just said, right? If you, if you consider the reality of the situation, we're not going to get an effective military response out of this president. And so if the choice is between an ineffective military response and no military response, there is something to be said for not doing it. Uh, I think most of the supporters of Obama's presidency are not supporters of a military strike on Syria. Even those who in Congress who have voted yes, like uh, our friend Nancy Pelosi, I don't think would vote yes if there were a Republican in the White House, or if they somehow were making this decision with a blank slate, not knowing who's in the White House. Uh, so, uh, the the I mean, the, it's it's of a piece, right? The, the Obama's weakness and the uh, the impossibility nope. of of an effective military solution. Well, we've also written uh, on the editorial page, too, about the bipartisanship that more Republicans tend to support Democratic leaders when they want to go uh, to war than the other way around. Well, this would be a counterexample, wouldn't it? Indeed, it would. Let's put up the third reader comment, and I quote, I keep reading about how Americans are war-weary. While I completely sympathize, remember that this administration has been running around telling us Al-Qaeda is dead and that it's not politically correct to use the word terrorist anymore. We've become desensitized to what's really going on. America is at war, whether we like it or accept it. By downplaying this, Obama has shot himself in the foot in attempting to garner support for this misadventure. Chris Baker. Well, there's a chicken and egg problem here, isn't it? I mean, you've got these two factors, the war weariness of the public and the poor leadership of Barack Obama. But they're really part of the same phenomenon. I mean, Obama would not have been elected in 2008 if the public weren't war weary. The public might not have been as war weary in 2008 <laughs> if Democrats had not been so anxious to jump off the Iraq uh, support. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, John Kerry did before even the shooting began. Uh, and so, you know, it plays off each other. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're 
two parts of the same phenomenon. Okay, gonna have to leave it at that. Best of the web today, columnist James Taranto. Thanks. Thanks very much.